All right, what's up everybody? So I just wanted to give a quick update on my thoughts on the market before FOMC meeting. Um, so anyone who knows me knows that I like these four hour 200s for Bitcoin specifically. Uh, I use 200 moving averages for everything, but specifically for Bitcoin, four hour 200s have, have been pretty key for a large portion of the past two, almost three years now. All right, so just looking back, seeing how well they get respected uh, and then more relevant uh, to local price action, right? Um, past three months, past four or five months or so, right? This three month long period for our 200s were exact macro tops and then flipping them made me go bullish and, you know, breaking out of the range, daily market structures, uptrending, blah, 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 whatever. And then we see that 15% rally in the course of a month. And only after the four hour 200s finally break and we break our daily market structure and we fall back inside of this, you know, macro range, uh, do we finally see a meaningful sort of pullback, right? In in the midst of everyone saying, oh, it's a bear market relief rally. It's a, it's, you know, a relief rally, relief rally, relief rally. Fed hasn't pivoted yet. You guys are stupid, right? Only after this point were all those people right. And they missed out on that rally, right? And it was only 15%. But when you apply that exact same mindset to something like ETH, uh, you actually ended up seeing more of like a 60% move. So different structure for ETH, but uh, same exact kind of concept, right? So much larger uh, and much um, more exaggerated kind of rally. And really, that's more of what I was looking for for Bitcoin, All right? So ever since losing those four hour 200s, uh, I was pretty much forced to go bearish, right? And at least anticipate mid range and range lows because that is the simple rule of range trading, right? Ranges, you just simply expect range lows to mid range to range highs, right? And then range highs to mid range to range lows, range lows, mid range, range highs. When you break out above the range, you do not fight the range, right? That is now your new trend. That is your expectation is up, right? You've broken up away from the range. Only after you fall back inside, right, which also happened after we lost our four hour 200s, broke down below our daily market structure, right, broke our daily market structure bearishly. Uh, only after you fall back inside, can you then say, oh, you know what, that is a deviation. And that sort of makes you think that the range is going to continue the norm, right? And the norm is range highs to mid range to range lows, and then from range lows, mid range, range highs, and from range highs, mid range, range lows. So when we come down to these range lows for the fifth time, sixth time, something like that, right? What is the expectation? And it should be range lows, go to mid range, go to range highs, right? So we have that in the back of our mind. In the meantime, uh, I still want to acknowledge these four hour 200s. But just simply for the fact that as long as we're below the four hour 200s, there's an increased chance that we just simply break down below the range altogether, right? Because at this point, the four hour 200s themselves are not actionable, right? Price action doesn't respect them the way that we have gotten used to the past four or five months prior, which is why I started this video discussing the four hour 200s, right? So really, the most relevant thing to us at the moment is the fact that for the past three months, we have been ranging, right? And that is the most relevant thing. That is the most actionable high time frame analysis that I can give you, right? The combination, the, the thing that gets added on to that is, oh, by the way, since we're below the four hour 200s, and obviously since momentum is swinging down, right, into these range lows, there's a chance that we just simply break down below the range altogether, right? And if that happens, that would really just kind of indicate, oh, it's time to go on vacation, come back in a, you know, a couple of weeks, couple of months, whatever, and buy Bitcoin on a 30 to 40% discount you know, to, to where it was at when it was trading at range lows, right? That's really what that would imply. Uh, when we break out of you know, major ranges like that, you really do not want to fight those breakouts. And I was saying the exact same thing here for this period, uh, that month long sideways, I said that too. Uh, this three or four months led to a 50% rally within the next month thereafter. This was three months of sideways that saw a negative 50%, you know, haircut, right? So when we break out of this range, you really don't want to fight it. 
in the meantime, there is absolutely the justification as to why you can just simply continue trading the range for what it is. It's a range. You buy range lows, you sell mid range, you sell range highs. It's that simple, right? The other thing that goes in combination with this to kind of justify why I'm long on Bitcoin from 18.8, .8, I bought some, a little bit of a, a spot bag prior to FOMC, just simply because, and I tweeted this out, um, every single FOMC meeting, right? So they're always two days long. And then when you look at the first day of that meeting and where price is at, by the time the meeting has ended and 24 hours after the meeting has ended, you usually see a return of around 7% on average, right? And that has been the case for every single meeting as of the past year. So if that's the trend, right? And that is 100% accuracy. Obviously, every single meeting has seen a 5 to 7% to, you know, the most extreme was 17%, right? Somewhere in that range. But on average, when you average it out, 7% rally within 24 hours of the meeting ending, right? And obviously, every single meeting has not changed anything in the grand scheme of things. Because look, when we go look at this Bitcoin chart, we're obviously still downtrending, right? So if you go ask your, your 10 year old, and you go ask little Timmy, hey, what is the trend for this chart? He's going to tell you it's a downtrend, right? So our weekly is still downtrending. Our daily is pushing sideways. And at the moment, we're at range lows, we have this event catalyst kind of coming up. And the trend is we always rally into the meeting. And even sometimes that rally gets sustained. And that would just simply be, oh, well, look at that. Mid range, and then range highs, you are not allowed to be shocked in the event that that happens, right? I'm not saying that it will. Uh, for my spot long, I'm really just looking for and I already took profit on it. But just looking for um, a push up into this local trend resistance, which was the 30 minute 200s, right? And then if we do see that rally upon, you know, a 75 basis points hike or whatever, right? Uh, into mid range, that's going to be my final take profit. And that's also where our four hour 200s are residing. And then we'll go from there. And, you know, uh, if we obviously break out above the mid range and above the four hour 200s, then now the analysis becomes, okay, we're still ranging. We're probably going to head to those range highs, right? Just the same way that you would say, well, we're probably going to head to these range lows, right? We're, we're probably going to head to these range highs at this point. And we have to keep in mind the fact that there's always going to be the chance that we just simply break out above the range entirely, right? You're just using probabilities to, to give yourself uh, an edge in terms of what are you allowed to anticipate, right? And in this sense, we're allowed to anticipate range lows coming up to test this local trend, right? Potentially breaking out of this local trend. And if so, you just simply target whatever the next major level is. So that would be, you know, potentially somewhere around these previous highs. That's about a 4% move. Uh, mid range is, you know, 6% move. That's really my take profit area. That's where I'm really interested in. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you scale your analysis from there. Uh, and that's really it. So there's not too much else to say. Uh, I'm really just looking for that rally come FOMC meeting start. Uh, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just so you know, uh, I'm doing a Bybit giveaway. So I'm giving away an iPhone 13 to anyone who uses my Bybit referral link. All you got to do is use the link and then deposit, I think, $10 minimum. And that automatically makes you eligible to win an iPhone 13 really simple stuff. And that's the, honestly the best way to support me. If you really enjoy my videos and have gotten value from them, rather than donating or whatever, just use the Bybit referral link that's going to do much more for me personally. Uh, and I would really appreciate it. So, you know, like comment, subscribe, all that YouTube influencer bullshit. Uh, appreciate you guys much love. Take it easy.